Hey, how you guys doing? It's uh, late here and a skunk outside farted, so hopefully there's not a lot of video editing because it kind of stinks out here. So yesterday I had a, a nice conversation with Chad GPT, and if you don't know what that is, it's, uh, it's pretty much Terminator, and it's going to take over everything in the next uh, few years. It's a computer AI that basically knows everything, and it's a really good Python programmer. Um, so if you're a programmer at Python, watch out. It's coming for you. So yeah, conversation-wise, we talked about this contraption here. So the idea here is a, it's a tube in a tube. It's a tube inception. Gantry A, gantry B. Fill the uh, inside with concrete. I'm actually going to use grout. What you're left with is a composite. And that will make this whole thing quite a lot more rigid. A lot of damping properties. There's a lot of nice things to it. So I didn't actually primarily just talk to ChatGPT. I did read a few white papers. And it, you just re you read that stuff and you just get, you get stuck in all the numbers and formulas and you know, you spend 10 minutes and then you realize you don't even know what you're reading anymore. I went back to Chappy G GPT and, uh, you know, ask it some simple questions about this stuff and, you know, more concise and straight uh, to the point answers or questions. And, uh, yeah, it, it does a great job. This is actually called, uh, in the building construction industry, CFDST. And that is a concrete filled double skin steel tube and it's, it's generally in the form of a column. This is horizontal. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to run them this way, but they are designed to handle loads vertically. And that's because uh, everything's under compressive uh, loads. So your concrete in there, concrete's really strong compressive lives. So it's in there and like if it starts buckling, it's putting pressure on the two tubes. It's, it's trying to flare this tube out and then it's trying to squish that other tube at the same time and the forces resulting in that is just tremendous and the composite nature of this is so that it is apparently stronger than if you were to fill this outer tube all the way up with concrete being that it's composite there's lots of extra properties that make it superior to just relying solely on a steel perimeter and a concrete core. I'll just read out some of the stuff that uh, ChatGPT, Super Terminator, that's going to get us all uh, what it thought of. Um, the outer and inner uh, steel tubes work together to resist the applied loads while the concrete infill provides additional compressive strength to the column. The concrete also helps prevent buckling of the steel tube under compressive loads and provides fire resistance. So that's practically uh, yeah, what I mentioned. And some interesting things about this, CFDST columns also have, offer several advantages over traditional steel or concrete columns. They have higher load carrying capacities, better durability, improve fire resistance, and enhance seismic performance. So these things are, they're really good around earthquakes. That's where they perform really well. And it so happens that an earthquake happened today in, uh, well, a second one in Turkey and Syria. As basically the whole world knows, what was it, two weeks ago, Turkey and Syria had those, uh, those earthquakes and, you know, it was a catastrophe. And today, around lunchtime, where I am in Ontario, apparently they had 6.3. I don't think it was in the same location. I haven't really read the news on it, but I don't think it was as bad. They, they got to start uh, building stuff with these because apparently these are the way to go. Um, talking to the AI about, you know, I asked it, why not, why not use it for a uh, gantry for the stuff? So it came back and said uh, the uh, CFDST columns have a higher stiffness and damping ratio than conventional steel or concrete columns, which can help to reduce the vibrations deflections of a gantry during operation and this includes the uh, you know the same dimension 
The composite structure of a CFDST column also provides improved durability and resistance to fatigue and corrosion, um, which is, you know, it's beneficial. Being hollow can also can also run my servo cables and stuff. That was the original thing I was looking at with this because I um, I had my uh, what is it X servo X servo here and I have a uh, limit or a homing sensor for that axes. So I gotta I gotta get it over there and my options are run it through the inside or have it all you know along there, which is not that great. Chad GPT also says uh, the composite structure of a CFDST column also provides improved durability and fire resistance to fatigue and corrosion, which could be beneficial for a gantry that undergoes repeated movements and loads over time. One thing I had a hard time finding without Chat GPT's help was the correct ratio of the inner and outer tubes. I looked all over the place. I probably spent an hour trying to find formulas or, or you know graphs showing that stuff and I ended up just giving up and asking chat GPT and it came back and said that the optimal ratios is 0.5 and 0.7 so that is uh, if the inner tube is half the half the diameter of the outer tube or you know so it's uh, if it's 50 percent to 75 percent and uh, what I have here is uh, three inches by four inches, three by four, and then this inner tube is a two by three. And when you work the numbers, that uh, equates to uh, this tube being seventy percent of the size of this tube when you when you work out the the mean over the dimensions. That should fall in line with the optimal ratio between those. So these uh, structural composites have some good damping properties. So damping ratio is a measure of the level of damping or energy dissipation in a vibrating system. It is a dimensionless parameter that describes the rate at which the amplitude of vibrations in a system decay over time. A higher damping ratio means that the vibration decays more quickly, while a lower damping ratio means that the vibrations persist for a longer time. So higher damping ratio, good. In terms of damping ratio, CFDST columns generally exhibit higher damping ratios than CFST columns. And a CFST column, it's a fancy acronym for a regular steel tube full of concrete. Nothing hollow in it, just full up to the brim. So this is because CFDST columns have an additional layer of steel around the concrete core, which is the uh, inside one which increases the overall stiffness of the structure and results in a higher neutral frequency. A higher neutral frequency leads to a higher damping ratio, which means that the CFDST column is better able to dissipate energy and reduce oscillations caused by seismic events. Neutral frequency is higher. That just helps dissipate everything quicker. So the neutral frequency is uh, a higher neutral frequency can lead to a higher damping ratio because it indicates a stiffer system that is more capable of dissipating energy. So chat GPT the rest of you again, like what is a higher neutral frequency? So in a stiffer system, the neutral frequency is higher, which means that the system will oscillate more quickly in response to a disturbance. This also means that damping ratio must be higher to effectively dissipate the energy of the vibration and prevent the system from continuing to oscillate. So that's all important qualities for a CNC machine because you know, they're under a lot of vibration due to the cutting forces. So I think the main takeaway looking into all that stuff is these things are really strong. Their uh, ability to perform and dampen vibrations is really, really good and apparently better than a uh, a tube that is just completely full of concrete. Uh, I asked it some more questions regarding the damping properties uh, in relation to the the inner and outer uh, uh, ratios. It came back and it was it was mentioning that there's not a lot of papers that are uh, showing that uh, it's one way or another. Like I would assume that like if this is smaller, you know, you'll have more concrete or grout or whatever you're filling it with. 
more fill in there and that just has a capacity to absorb those vibrations better but apparently that might not be the case so i think i'll wrap up the video here uh, i have not found any examples of anybody else using this type of construction member on a cnc machine i, I searched online i couldn't find anybody doing this but i think this is a valid and solid idea I, you know the properties of this thing how rigid it is i think it would work really well so let me know if you got any questions or comments, uh, tips especially. And if you are an expert in this field, let me know what your thoughts about this. If you know any structural engineers, send them the link to this video because I'd like to get their take on using this kind of member for this purpose. See you all in the next video and here comes a fancy transition.